Professor, I am not understanding where the meaning is here. When and how is this expression used? I fell for it. No, that is what you say when you meet the mate of your soul. The expression is, I fell for it. Are you a stump? I mean, are you stumped? That makes me surprised. Can I ask you about another word? The one that is written here. Hmm? Is something on my face? I am without much time to study. I must use my time with wisdom. Is that really what you are thinking? Or maybe you have curiosity about the mark on my face? You are already knowing that I am from Bridget. This is a mark from Bridget. It is a prayer to the forest spirits. A prayer to be protected. Hunters ask the forest spirits to have safe and bountiful hunting. There are many spirits in Bridget. I have more marks on my arms and back. They are prayers for my family's health and triumph. Are you wanting to see them? That gives me happiness. If there is ever the chance, you will see them. I have much gratitude for you, Professor. You always listen with patience. I can read and understand the language of Foglin, but to speak it... Uh, gives me difficulty. I hope I will keep having your support, and I will give you my support too, with my whole heart. I have things that I cannot fail to accomplish. Yes, we will keep walking forward. Apologies. I lost time while I was training. There are not many chances for real fighting here. My body is more weak than it was. Weaker, I mean. I will keep training now. I hope your night is good. I need to have more training. There are things that I have not done yet. Things that have to be done. For the future. I have to try with hardness. Training, studying, Socializing? I will not always be having time to do those things. And speaking the language of Fodlin, I worry I will never be doing it just right. Why? Because the position of Bridget is weak. Fodlin and Dagda are big. Bridget is a small island in the middle of them. Bridget has great beauty, but little power. We will not have, uh, will not survive unless we get more strength. I will lead Bridget, and so I have responsibility. I have to have more strength than anyone. Having more strength than anyone might be un, uh, impossible, but I have to give it my best try. I am an ally of everyone, and I have belonging at the Officer's Academy. That is also why I try with hardness. You can always be counting me. I mean, counting on me. But you should know that one of these days will be when I return to Bridget. Before that day, do not try stopping me from trying. And please, keep watch... watching over me. With you, I can try with more hardness than I could alone.
Professor, please do not be concerned. I just did too much overworking and lost my strength. Yes, I have no problems. Accept my apology for giving you worry. I have sorrow. Uh, I mean, I am sorry to be fainting at a time like this. Even though I was not asking for your care and attention, you gave it willingly. I am thinking that is incorrect. Will you have a listen to me? There is something that I must be saying. I am thinking you already have knowledge of why I came to Vodlin. Not for studying, but as a hostage for the Empire. So that Bridget would not be rebelling anymore. It feels like... a knife against my throat. That I am making my grandfather obey the Empire. If I were running away from the Empire, then Bridget would be defeated. I am not having any options. To be living, I must be fighting to win. For Bridget to be living, the Empire needs to be crushed. So I must be crushing the Empire. That is what my people are wanting from me. And what my grandfather, the King of Bridget, is wanting. My want? I... I am not knowing of that. The wants of my people are something I have power to achieve. Their wants are my own. What I really want... I have understanding. Wait, no, I... I actually do not have understanding. Yet. What I am understanding is that there is something I am not understanding. When I know what my true want is, I give you my promise that I will be telling you first. We really had success! We got the victory! The war is finished now, but there are still many, many problems for solving. I... It is past the time I should be returning to Bridget. Yes. My grandfather. I... I can't be leaving him now. Our relationship with Fodlin will be changing. I am royalty of Bridget. There are duties that I must be fulfilling. But... I can't be sitting on the throne. I will be choosing a new leader. And then I will be returning to Fodlin. This is what my heart is wanting. Yes. I am meaning... No? I will try to speak with more precision. If I were staying away from Fodlin, then I could not be having what I am wanting. And that is... I will be telling you now if you are wanting to hear it. I am wanting to... to stay with you. I have hopes that we can spend all of our lives close to each other. I want us to be supporting each other and live with each other in times of joy and times of sorrow. In all of the times. Is that... Is that a possibility? This is... a ring of promise. I have understanding, and I am accepting with all of my heart. Rings are for promising weddings. I read all about that custom in a Fodlin book. I have never told my feelings to someone like that before. I had so much nervousness. You have made my heart fly with happiness. I, Petra, give you my promise. Spirits of Earth, please be guiding us home for all of our days. Spirits of Water, Please be filling our cups with kindness and good fortune. Spirits of wind, please be gifting us freedom and divine protection. Those are the words we are saying in Bridget. 
when we give someone our promise. There is one other thing to be said. <clears throat> My beloved, you are the most precious thing in the world to me. You enchant and fascinate me, and each day, you set my heart aflame. <laughs> Did I give you a surprise? I have been practicing those words with great diligence. I am so happy. You have my deep gratitude and all of my heart, for now and forever. Professor, I am not understanding where the meaning is here. When and how is this expression used? I fell for it. No, that is what you say when you meet the mate of your soul. The expression is, I fell for it. Are you a stump? I mean, are you stumped? That makes me surprised. Can I ask you about another word? The one that is written here. Mm -hmm. Is something on my face? I am without much time to study. I must use my time with wisdom. Is that really what you are thinking? Or maybe you have curiosity about the mark on my face? You are already knowing that I am from Bridget. This is a mark from Bridget. It is a prayer to the forest spirits, a prayer to be protected. Hunters ask the forest spirits to have safe and bountiful hunting. There are many spirits in Bridget. I have more marks on my arms and back. They are prayers for my family's health and triumph. Are you wanting to see them? That gives me happiness. I will be showing them to you soon. I have much gratitude for you, Professor. You always listen with patience. I can read and understand the language of Foglin, but to speak it uh, gives me difficulty. I hope I will keep having your support, and I will give you my support too, with my whole heart. I have things that I cannot fail to accomplish. Yes, we will keep walking forward. Apologies. I lost time while I was training. There are not many chances for real fighting here. My body is more weak than it was. Weaker, I mean. I will keep training now. I hope your night is good. I need to have more training. There are things that I have not done yet. Things that have to be done. For the future. I have to try with hardness. Training, studying, Socializing, I will not always be having time to do those things. And speaking the language of Fodlin, I worry I will never be doing it just right. Why? Because the position of Bridget is weak. Fodlin and Dagda are big. Bridget is a small island in the middle of them. Bridget has great beauty. But little power. We will not have... Uh, will not survive unless we get more strength. I will lead Bridget, and so I have responsibility. I have to have more strength than anyone. Having more strength than anyone might be un... Uh, impossible. But I have to give it my best try. I am an ally of everyone and I have belonging at the Officer's Academy. That is also why I try with hardness. You can always be counting me. I mean, counting on me. 
But you should know that one of these days will be when I return to Bridget. Before that day, do not try stopping me from trying. And please, keep watch... watching over me. With you, I can try with more hardness than I could alone. Professor, please do not be concerned. I just did too much overworking and lost my strength. Yes, I have no problems. Accept my apology for giving you worry. I have sorrow. Uh, I mean, I am sorry to be fainting at a time like this. Even though I was not asking for your care and attention, you gave it willingly. I am thinking that is incorrect. Will you have a listen to me? There is something that I must be saying. I am thinking you already have knowledge of why I came to Fogelin. Not for studying, but as a hostage for the Empire. So that Bridget would not be rebelling anymore. It feels like... a knife against my throat. That I am making my grandfather obey the Empire. If I were running away from the Empire, then Bridget would be defeated. I am not having any options. To be living, I must be fighting to win. For Bridget to be living, the Empire needs to be crushed. So I must be crushing the Empire. That is what my people are wanting from me. And what my grandfather, the King of Bridget, is wanting. My want? I... I am not knowing of that. The wants of my people are something I have power to achieve. Their wants are my own. What I really want... I have understanding. Wait, no, I... I actually do not have understanding. Yet. What I am understanding is that there is something I am not understanding. Before the war is over, I will have understanding. That, you can be counting on. Petra, you seem to be flourishing in your new environment. Is all going well for you? Lady Edelgard, everything is well with me. Thank you for your question. Everyone shows great kindness, even while I am still learning about the language. I'm glad to hear it. After all, a Bridget Royal like yourself is of vital importance to the future of the Empire. If you ever need anything, please let me know. It's my job to watch out for you, after all. If that is your want, I will rely on you if I have the need. However, I will not have that need. I can resolve any problems that occur by myself. I don't doubt it. Perhaps I'm worrying too much. I just don't know what I would say to your family if something were to happen to you. Do not spend your worry on me. In Bridget, there is a phrase we say. You cannot shoot two birds with one arrow. Bridget and I are that second bird. Your first target is... your ambition. Can you disagree? There is certainly truth in your words. As Emperor, I have an ambition that I must fulfill. It requires that I see this war through to the end. Tell me, Petra, who do you think I am? Huh? I will tell you. I am Edelgard von Hressfeld, and yes, I'm attempting to do what no one else can. I'm prepared to shoot two birds, or even three, with a single arrow. That is the least of the impossible things I will accomplish. If you don't need my patronage, then prove it. Show me your power. Never settle for being the bird. Be the arrow instead. I will take your words to my heart, and you will be seeing my power. I give you my promise. I have been watching you in secrecy, Edelgard. But you and Hubert were noticing me, correct? 
Well, if you intend to shadow us like that, you can be sure it won't escape our notice. Hubert was primed and ready to... remove you. I ordered him to stand out. You have my thanks. I have been making a decision that I am wanting to learn from you. I was thinking it was enough to be shooting one bird with one arrow. But after speaking with you, I trained with hardness. Now I can be shooting two birds with one arrow. Two pheasants? Are you implying that... Yes, a single arrow. That's astounding, Petra. Hmm. It's perhaps a bit late to explain now, but what I was getting at earlier was actually... <laughs> I am having a joke. You... come again? I really was shooting these birds with one arrow, but my joke is that I did have understanding about what you told me. I took it to my heart. Did you now? You are a person with great bluntness. I am admiring of you. As an emperor, a commander, a warrior, and a friend, you are excelling at all that you do. All of the Empire is resting on... on your shoulders, and that is including Brigid, too. I will not be falling behind you. I will be carrying Brigid on my shoulders, too. And one day, you and I will be facing each other, and we will be shaking hands. Yes, that much is certain. I can see that you no longer need me to look out for you. You and I are much the same. We dutifully shoulder our burdens and stand tall no matter what. It would be foolish of me to deny it. Your words give me great joy. And it also gave me joy to see you being flustered when I was showing you the birds. A cheap trick to be sure, but inarguably funny. To think that you went to all the trouble of shooting two pheasants at once for the sake of a joke. <laughs> well played, Petra. We both are growing every day. I hope we will keep doing so. This looks like an ideal place to take a nap. Only one way to know for sure. And there's a nice breeze today, too. Claude? Huh? Why are you taking a sleep on the ground, Claude? Is that Petra? Where are you? Were you up in that tree the whole time? I couldn't feel your presence at all. Amazing. It is safe to take sleep in the tree's top. Why would you choose the dangerous ground instead? Your logic is sound, I'll give you that. But how is one supposed to get up there without losing the sleepies from the effort? I do not know what is meant by the sleepies, but getting in the tree's top is easy. And you will be using all of your energy, so that good sleep will find you up in the tree. I see. That makes a certain kind of sense, but it's not as relaxing as a good ground sleep. Give it some trying. And do not think with too much hardness when you return to the ground. Feel it. If you stop for thinking, your arms will get heavy. That is way more thought than I'd hoped to give this nap of mine. But I'm not one to give up before even trying. There goes nothing. I... I can do this! I have not known a noble here who can climb trees. Is this a weakness of Fodland nobles? No, not a weakness. I just... How do I... Yeah! You should be quitting. It is a danger to be falling from such a height. Oh, I, I think that's enough for today. This might sound like an excuse, but we don't have a lot of tall trees where I grew up. This is all new to me. You should take your sleep on the ground. I will take mine in the tree. Uh, you won that round, tree. Hey there, Petra. Claude? Where are you? Where else? Wait, I'll meet you down there. Claude! I thought you were not able to climb the trees. True, and that is exactly why I worked like a madman to devise a new climbing technique. I have much admiration for that. 
to climb is a skill with value. Uh, what can I say? I just... Okay, so I may have cheated a little by using my bow to shoot a rope over a branch, or a few branches, or all of the branches. But once I got up there and hauled up the ropes, it was the same result as if I'd climbed it your way. I am understanding. That costs more time, though, so it is not the best thing for hunting. But you are not harming the tree, so that is... an advantage. I am liking this technique. You're right. I didn't harm the tree at all. I'm surprised that impressed you. The tree has a spirit. If you hurt the tree, you will give its spirit anger. I see. I take it the people of Bridget have a close relationship with nature, then? Trees give us food and also shelter. We are needing them, and they are needing us. True. The people of Fodland believe everything is a blessing from the goddess. They've forgotten to be grateful to nature, too. Nature gives us life, sustains us. Without it, we couldn't breathe, couldn't live. It's everything. It's fine to pray to the goddess, but we have to respect nature, too. Don't you think? Yes. I do not know this goddess, but I know nature. That is the knowing I prefer to have. You and me both. Claude, what are you doing? The training equipment needed maintenance, so I thought I'd give it a good cleaning and some oil. Why is that for you to do? If you intend to use something a lot, it's on you to take good care of it. You are a noble who does not have fear of working with hardness or becoming dirty. And you can climb trees. I am... impressed. Thanks, but to be honest, I don't think being a noble really has anything to do with anything. Nobles and commoners are all equal here. We're all buddies. Even you do chores, don't you? Social rank doesn't matter when you put your life in each other's hands. I like that about this place. I have your same opinion. Status is something chosen by chance, not by a person. Everything became different when I came from Bridget to the Empire. Nobility does not stop life from surprising you. I know just what you mean. It's not like the ancestors of the nobility or royalty were selected by the goddess herself, after all. What does origin or status matter? In the grand scheme of things, we're all just insignificant mortals. Nobility isn't a matter of birthright alone. At least not in my eyes. Claude, you are... <laughs> very much strange for a noble. Thanks, and same to you. You're a princess of Bridget, right? If I'm a strange noble, you are too. I am normal in Bridget. In Fodlin, you are an... <laughs> abnormality. <laughs> an abnormality, am I? Gentleman that I am, I'll go ahead and take that as a compliment. I think also that your heart is kind. I am thinking you will be a good king. I'll remember that. But for now, this equipment isn't going to clean itself. I will be helping you. We will join together our efforts. <laughs> You're an abnormality, princess. A wonderful abnormality. Hey, Petra, are you there? Yes. What is your need? Oh, I didn't actually think you'd be here. You think I am not here, but you were calling for me. It seemed best to call out as soon as I arrived. I can never tell when you're here, and it wouldn't be good for my heart if you just dropped in from out of nowhere. When I was arriving, I called out for Claude, too. I was thinking it would give me joy if you were here. Is that a fact? I'm honored. Anyway, I see you beat me here today. Say, Petra, wouldn't it be great if, no matter how bad the war gets, at least this place stayed peaceful? Yes, I think so. I like this tree. It gives me calmness. I like this tree too. It feels like it's always welcoming and reliable. But, when the war has ended, I must be leaving this tree. I must be returning to Bridget. Claude, my grandfather has been saying I must be, uh, must find a husband of Fodlin. Whoa, where did that come from? You sly minx, have you been searching for a suitor all this time? 
If Fodlin and Bridget become bound by marriage, it will give my grandfather great joy. Well, you are a princess, so it makes sense that you have obligations. I am not having an obligation. I will only be marrying if I find a good person. So, you just need to find a man who meets your expectations. That could be tricky. No, I will be finding one. It will not be a problem. Oh? And who's the lucky fellow? It is my secret. I will not be telling him yet. I see. Do you think he can give you the kind of future you deserve? I am not knowing about the future. But my perfection... Uh, my perfect husband could be him. And if he gives refusal, I will be tying him up and dragging him home. Tie up? <laughs> well, I'm sure the lucky man will learn to accept his fate one way or another. Besides, I doubt any man would reject a proposal from a catch like you. Petra? Industrious as ever, I see. Hello, Hubert. Yes, I am trying to be industrious. I must be working hard to improve my position. Right now, it is not a good one. Even accounting for that, your efforts are impressive. I wish a little of you would rub off on certain people here. One troublesome slouch in particular. Rub? I will not be rubbing on anyone. Not literally. I never would have imagined you would adjust so well to life in Fodlan. When I first met you, you couldn't understand a single word of the language. You had the look of a cornered animal. So much so, I thought you'd grown up in the wild. I had more youth then, and the experience was... terrifying. My grandfather ordered me to go to Fodlan with suddenness. I was stolen to a strange land filled with strange people. The treatment I was receiving was like... like I was a strange beast. It is unfortunate, but while you were called our guest, you were actually a hostage. You were meant to be insurance that Brigid would not restore its alliance with Dagda and attack us. The Empire required leverage, and after all, you are the Princess of Brigid. It gave me sadness to leave my home, but I am not unhappy that I came to the Empire. I have learned much understanding from the outside world. My experience has made me become who I am. And meeting you and Lady Edelgard has had great value for me. I admire your spirit in the face of adversity. You set a strong example to follow. <laughs> After all, we face great adversity even now. Hmm. Looking out toward Bridget, are you? Yes. There are some times I cannot stop my thoughts from going home. It will be much time before I return. Bridget feels... far away. It is quite a long way. To say nothing of the sea that lies between here and there. Being unable to return must further add to the distance in your mind. It is as you say. When I return to Bridget, I will be the new queen. I am wishing to show my strength during this war, and to help relations with the Empire. I believe you will be successful. You may not be Lady Edelgard's equal, but you are resourceful enough to make an excellent queen. And unlike Lady Edelgard, you will not be forced to harden your heart. Not Edelgard's equal? Is that what you are saying? Understand that I mean no disrespect by this, but it is a fact that you are far beneath her. Make no mistake about what would happen if you were to raise your banner in revolt against her. She would crush you mercilessly. That is not a difference of equal... of... equality. It is a difference of power. Even if our homelands were on equal footing, Lady Edelgard would still prevail. I can see with clarity the difference between me and Lady Edelgard. But that has no matter. I would never lose. <laughs> How amusing. For your sake, you had better hope you are right.
Hubert, I have a request to give you, if I may be doing that. Hello, Petra. How unusually formal. You are always comparing me against Edelgard. I have been observing you, and you are not often making comparisons like that. So why are you always comparing me? I do not enjoy being compared. Hmm. An astute observation. I should point out that such a comparison only reflects well on you. I am perhaps doing so because you are both royalty. That is not making sense to me. In battle, you and I are the same. Neither of us has a higher rank than General. Edelgard is leading the entire army. But you and I are both leading a part of the army. That should be making us... What is it? Ah. Comrades in arms. Comrades in arms, you say? When you are looking at me, you are thinking of me compared to Edelgard. But I want you to be looking at me as only myself. Do you have understanding? I do not want you seeing me as foreign royalty, but as your comrade in arms, who is working with you at your side. Ah, I understand you now. It seems I've done you a great disservice, Petra. Your friendship is important to me. I am sorry that I failed to make that clear. By comparing you to Lady Edelgard, I have treated you merely as one chasing after her shadow. I have done so even while believing that the Empire and Bridget would never go to war again. Do you really think you can stop comparing? I am knowing well that Edelgard takes a big place inside your heart. I do not fully understand it. But when I look at you, I simply cannot help but think of Her Majesty. Your past, full of hardship. Your unwavering determination, your uncommon excellence. As such, I cannot promise never to compare you. But I will try my best to do so less often. Hmm. For now, that will be okay. But I will not be giving up on this. And I want you knowing that one day, when you are comparing, you will be finding I have won the comparison. <laughs> What an amusing thing to say. Lady Edelgard's face would contort most bitterly were she to hear it. Be marking my words, Hubert. One day, between the two of us, you will be choosing me. Ferdinand? Our professor is wanting to see you. Hmm. He has much concentration right now. I will wait for him to be finished reading. Mm -hmm. Diplomacy has an effect upon weapons development. Yes, that makes sense. Oh, Petra! How long have you been there? A short time. You were devoting all of your attention to that book. Forgive me, I was fully absorbed in my reading. I see you have been reading as well. Anything interesting? I am studying the history of Foglin. A history book? What a keen student you are. And it's about House Hressfeld. Certainly a stimulating topic. I am wishing to learn all about Foglin. What is the book you are reading? Oh, this? This relates to a little hobby of mine. The regional history of weapons development in Foglin. Militaries have to adapt their weapons according to terrain and climate and they have to keep up with technologies in other regions. It's very interesting. Yes, it is interesting. I see why you would be enjoying that kind of reading. Oh, does that excite your curiosity too? Perhaps you would care to read more about it then. This is just one of 18 volumes, and our library has the entire collection. I give you my gratitude. Research of weapons could be a good reference for me. Oh. Please take my apologies. I was meaning to tell you that our professor is wanting to see you. Oh, it is not like you to forget something. I suppose I ought to be going then. Yes, it is a rarity that I forget something. But it is not impossible. Taking care of some weapon maintenance, Petra? You seem completely absorbed. Yes, taking care of the weapons has great importance. I 
cannot argue with that. That weapon there, is it from Bridget? No, it is a weapon of Dagda. But the people of Bridget use... I mean, used them often. Fascinating. I have read about the weapons of Dagda, but this is my first time seeing one in person. Lots of weapons and fighting techniques came from Dagda to Bridget. Ah, so Dagda to the west had a big influence on the Bridget archipelago. I am fascinated by foreign fighting techniques. Would you consider teaching me sometime? I will. But it is difficult to explain fighting with words. We can try sparring, maybe? Yes, a practical demonstration. I would be quite grateful. Let's have our beginning, then. <sighs> Perhaps we should stop there. Oh? Do you think you have understanding of the fighting techniques from Dagda? Yes. Now that I have experienced it firsthand, <laughs> I used to look down on foreign fighting styles, but I was clearly remiss. The footwork, the nimble way you shift your weight is extraordinary. I will have to remember those moves for the next time I am in battle. Clearly, you have honed your skills through practice. Your fist felt as sharp as a spear. Bridget is stuck in between Dagda and Foglin. It is of much importance to hone our fighting techniques. I am of the royal family, but I am a warrior before that. I must fight to live and to protect my home. When the alliances of Bridget and Dagda encroached on the Empire, they were always driven back. But perhaps the Empire's victory was due to geographic advantage or divine intervention, rather than military superiority. Having met you, that is what I think. I cannot help but feel a little disgraced. I held foreign fighting styles in such low regard without ever seeing them for myself. When I came to Fodlin, I felt disgraced for many things that I learned. But there is no disgrace in losing ignorance. We need to be learning and growing with each other, always. Yes, by working together we can make progress. And both sides need to look ahead to the future. Ferdinand. Huh? Ah, Petra. Is there something I can help you with? No, I am not needing help. I was just thinking that you look... lonely. Lonely? In wartime? Hardly. I am too busy trying to survive to feel lonely. But once we have survived, what will you do with yourself, Petra? Return to your home? Edelgard said she would like you to ascend the throne in Bridget, to ensure good relations between the nations. Yes. My plan is to be returning home. But if Bridget and Fodlin can be friendly... I will be able to have visits whenever I choose. Maybe it is even possible for me to be living in Fodlin. Live in Fodlin? Do you not want to go back to your homeland? I do have the hope of returning one day, but Fodlin is also like a homeland to me now. I came to Fodlin nine years ago. I have been living half of my life here. My family is living in Bridget, but in Fodlin, I have new family and new friends. New family? I am glad to hear you feel that way about us, Petra. In that case, we will have to make sure that none of us die. We do not want to lose anyone in the family. Yes, we will be winning, and you will not be dying. Ha! <laughs> do not worry. I do not intend to die. I have some things to do when the war is over. Things? Yes, you and I can be the link between Fodlin and Bridget. Oh! Okay, I have to confess, I fibbed a little, about not being lonely. When this war ends, I will be quite lonely indeed, if you go back to Bridget. Is that a truth? I have just made a decision. I will work as an ambassador, improving relations between our people. Whether you are in Bridget or Fodlin, I will be there too. Then both places can move forward together in eternal friendship. We ought to join forces and make that a reality. Do you not agree? You have my gratitude, Ferdinand. All of it. I have loneliness just like you. But your words gave me great happiness. Please do what you are saying, 
and be a bridge for Fodlin and Bridget. You can count on me. We will keep at it. And one day... Yes, one day, we will be seeing that future. Petra, would you pause a moment? Yes? Are you wanting something? I was observing your spear work, and I wonder if you don't think your transitions are sloppy. The way you move your arm before a strong thrust hinders your movement and slows your spear on its way back. It leaves a rather large opening. Which arm? My left or right? I think the right... No, actually it's both. It's something about the way you move your elbows. I am not understanding. Can you show me, please? Demonstrate? No, I'd hate to get sweat all over my book. But I must correct this. Please. Or are you unable to do, and you can only teach? I am more of a theorist than a practitioner. I advise and you implement. Very simple. Then... Please advise again. It's all quite simple. Sometimes you make a big stab downwards, right? Before that, you lift up. At that point, you sort of let the tension go and stop. It ruins the momentum of the stab. How can I be lifting up with no... no unnecessary moving? It's the arm movement that's extraneous. Calculate the locus of the spear and the elasticity of the muscles. Locus? Elasticity? Can you not just be showing me? Please. If you are showing me, I will learn it with quickness. I won't waste your time with such demonstrations. You're a smart one, Petra. You'll sort it out. Besides, I need to go now. I have a prior appointment to keep. Linhart only likes talking. It is on myself to prevail. Linhart. I have been waiting for much time. Please, watch me. Watch what, Petra? Whoa! Take careful with that spear! How did you find that? I did more training. Ah, you took my advice then. I will say, the problematic maneuver seems improved at least. At least? It is still no good? The spear isn't really my area of expertise, but I've seen enough training to understand the mechanics. I believe I can use that understanding to further help you improve your spear work. My spear work? Right! As I said, when you lift up and stab down, the momentum is ruined. You're trying to swing like a giant. You're not a giant, so that's a problem. So allow the spear's own momentum to do more of the hard work for you. Spear momentum. The spear is heavy. When you lift it up high, loosen your grip a little. At the top of my swing, loosen my grip. And then the weight will... carry it down? Precisely. When you put too much power into it, not only do you exhaust your grip, you tire yourself out. Got it? <sighs> Ugh, all that effort is taking its toll on me. You are very clever. I wonder why you have hatred for training. Because training is too much like fighting, and I'd really rather not fight. Also, I find training terribly dull. Anyway, good night. He does not use his cleverness. It is a very big waste. I want you to use your power, Linhart. Linhart. I need to be asking for your wisdom. Will you consent? My wisdom? About? I was hunting earlier and the land gifted me with lots of game. It was all brought by me to the kitchen, and then... You're not asking me for help with the butchery, are you? If so, stop right there. I despise the sight of blood. No, I am not asking that. All of that work and care is given right after the hunting. Giving gratitude, bleeding, skinning, all have been done to be making very nice fresh meat. That meat is sitting in the kitchen already. Oh, thank goodness. 
Then whatever do you need from me? I'm not much of a cook. I want to be smoking the meat, so we can be preserving it. There is a big quantity of it. But I am without enough firewood for the smoking. I am needing more than I was thinking I would. The darkness has fallen outside, so it will be difficult to be collecting it right now. Why not gather wood in the morning? Get some sleep now. This meat will not be waiting that long. It will be going to waste. Please, do you have any suggesting for what I can do? You have much wisdom for giving, so I am hoping you will be helping me. Okay, let me see. Easy to forage wood at this time of night. You know, there were a good number of desks and chairs in the ruined corner of the monastery. Some of the stuff there is salvageable, so none of it has been thrown away. There's definitely high-quality oak and beech out there. Both would be excellent for smoking meat. Is that factual? I was not knowing that. The wisdom you give is exceptional. Well, I wouldn't say that. As long as it's anything that looks broken beyond repair, no one should complain. I am giving you my gratitude, Linhart. Now, let's be going. Pardon? You have all of the wisdom about choosing wood for smoking. I am wanting your assistance. But it's bedtime. Okay, fine. I can point out the choice smoking wood. Ah, uh, then I'll have to help haul it all back, won't I? It would give me great happiness. There's no one better than you for this task. Please stop with the praising. All right, fine, I'll help. I'm just <sighs> not nice a guy. Linhart, please accept my apology. You are not deserving of this punishment. I am the one who suggested it would be great firewood. I suppose it's only fair I get punished, too. No one ever bothered to inform me that pile of trash was the property of the Imperial Army. My apologies, Petra. My idea turned out to be worthless. It was not worthless. It had great worth. You gave me great help so I could be smoking all of that meat. I give you all of my gratitude for that. Well, at least you'll have no worries about provisions. I just realized. They didn't actually tell us when the punishment will be over. You can be leaving if you are wanting to. I will not be telling anyone. This is my responsibility to take. How are you so obedient and yet so passionate at the... Oh, look, Petra! The book you were searching for! The Complete Guide to Fodlin's Wildlife! I have so much happiness! You are full of amazement. <laughs> well, books are my field of expertise. Still, what a stroke of luck. Linhart, can I be asking you something? What's that? You are no longer saying I am bothering you. Instead, you are helping me with my requests. What is the reasoning? Why am I not bothering you now? Hmm, interesting observation. I wonder why that is. You always ask me so earnestly. You seem to throw your entire being into all that you do. I guess I rather like it, working as hard as you do. On occasion, that is. You are liking the hard work? Yes. You inspire me to be, well, something that is not normally me. If you are liking it, then I will keep working hard. With your wisdom, I can be working even harder than before. That means I will be needing your wisdom from now onward. With my strength and your wisdom, there is nothing we can't be doing. I think you may be right. Your strength and my wisdom? That sounds like a wonderful combination. All right, time for some more... Oh, Petra. Hi. Caspar, do you want to train with each other? Uh, yeah, sure. You have had new training recently, and great improvements. I want great improvement too. Will you give me help? Well, hey, look at that. You pay more attention than I gave you credit for. I have been trying new training methods. They're definitely paying off. 
My movements are much sharper lately, more precise. I am knowing that. I want that too. You teach, I learn. We both get more strength. It will be greatness. All right. I mean, I guess we can give it a shot. Um, Petra? Yes, Kaspar? Um, no, n never mind. Sorry. I was just thinking about something else. Nothing at all. Let's train. I heard a question in your voice. Say it. No, no, no. It's really nothing. Don't worry about it. Okay. I will not be worrying. Can we begin the training? Ah, oh, fine. We can talk about it if you insist. You can stop pretending like you don't know. What am I knowing? About my father. Your father? He is of the military in the Empire. I hear he has great skill. No, not that. Well, it's kind of about that. I'm talking about when Dagda and Bridget invaded the Empire. My father led the Empire's army that fended off the invaders. Your father was in that battle. Did you really not know? My father killed yours. You... How long have you had this knowing? I just found out recently. I had no idea before then. But it's all I've been able to think about since. So, now you have the truth. Petra? <sighs> Damn it. What am I supposed to do now? Caspar, that equipment is new. It is suiting. It... it suits you. Oh, um... Right. Thanks. You get more strength each day. I do not want to be falling behind. I'm impressed with how much stronger you've gotten, too. More than I have. No! Kaspar, you are impressing to me. I want to be training with you. Just hold on, Petra. What is wrong? It's your attitude. How can you act so casual around me? My father killed your father. You shouldn't be able to stand the sight of me. You actually hate me, right? That's fine. I can take it. I completely understand. Just be honest. Give it to me straight. <sighs> if our roles were reversed, I don't think I'd be able to forgive you. I don't understand how you can just... You are not the one who did the killing, Kaspar. Our parents had... conflict. But we are not them. I have no worry about it. You should not either. I don't need to worry? Impossible! I don't think I'll ever be- You must. If not, the conflict will keep carrying on. If children cannot forgive, it will not ever have an ending. Is that what you are wanting? Well, of course not. I- Please. Give it some thinking. I will be leaving now. Hey, Petra. How's training going? It is going well. I am not having any troubles right now. Good. Good. At least things haven't gotten worse, right? <laughs> So, did, uh, did you hear what happened the other day? The professor, really. Caspar. Oh, whoa, uh, okay, there's no need for that. You are the son of my father's killer. That means I must be killing you and taking revenge. What? I thought you said it wasn't a big deal. We're not our parents and all that. Your optimism is not making sense. It is not possible that you are not having hatred for me. My father was killed. By the Empire. By your father. And so I will be impaling you on this blade, to be satisfying a deep wish of mine. A deep wish? What are you talking about? I am talking about my wish. Of course... <sighs> I am also having another wish. An even deeper wish. I wish for you and I to keep being friends. To keep fighting, and surviving together. When you are speaking of your father, 
It is with a proud smile that injures my heart. But that is only a small thing. You also are working harder than anyone I am knowing. So, I can't bring myself to be killing you. I see. So you do hate me because of what happened, but you still want to be my friend? You haven't stabbed me yet, so you obviously want me to live more than you want me to die. I hope. That must be the truth. More than all of it, I am not wishing to be losing you. It would give me great sadness. Oh, okay, that's a relief. I don't want to lose you either, and I definitely don't want to fight you. To be honest, if things were the other way around, I don't think I'd be able to forgive you. I'd hate you, and I'd hate myself for feeling that way. Caspar. But you're not like that. You see me as your ally and your friend. You had the chance to kill me, but you used it to show me that you want me to live. You really are an incredible person, Petra. I want to be more like you. I want to prove that I'm a good friend. I promise, you won't regret letting me live. You have my gratitude for your understanding. Hearing your words gives me great happiness. I was always feeling a barrier between our hearts. I am sure I was also the one putting it there. But from now onward, I will be sharing all of my heart with you. My grief and anger, joy and love, all of it. I'd like that, Petra. From now on, we'll be more honest and open with each other. Petra's really nice. Never yells, never says mean things about people. Maybe she'd be my friend. Oh, there she is now. Okay, Bernie, you can do this. Bernadetta, are you needing help with something? <gasps> How did you know? Do you have eyes in the back of your head or something? I do not have that, no. Right. Um, can I ask you something? Do you want to, um, maybe, uh, be friends or something? Maybe? Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't like me. I don't know what you think of me. What I am thinking? I am thinking that you remind me of Prey. What? Yes. Like a rabbit in the tall grass. Always watching for enemies. And you flee at any sign of danger. You are quick also. I must be careful that I am not hunting Bernie when I take out my bow. Oh, you try not to shoot me. That's, um, nice. You have similarities with Prey. That is all I mean to be saying. S so you're saying you might end up hunting me? There is no need to have concern. I will make sure my arrows are not hitting you. need forgiveness, but it is yours if you are wanting it. Was I saying something wrong? Hunting? Really? There's no way I can do this. Goddess, why couldn't I have stayed in today? Bernadetta, is this a trouble you are having? I heard that the duty to hunt is yours today. The, the duties all got assigned while I was holed up in my room. Do not be worrying. I can show you the way to hunt well. Oh, um, okay then. When you see a beast, you are thinking of it as an enemy. That is how prey thinks. You must think of the beasts as food. That is how the hunter thinks. So, it's not an enemy, it's food. But, um, how is it food when it's still alive? You pick the vegetables from the field. Those have life too. It is the same. You take a blade in your hand and take the lives of the vegetables. You cut their stalks and harvest without mercy. They do not scream, but you are still their killer. K killer 
fruit ripens and falls to the ground. The seeds sprout and a new life is born. That is life's cycle. It has cruelty, yes, but you must end life to eat. You must be killing to be living. Maybe, but I don't know if I want to be some... some kind of vegetable murderer. It is the same for rabbits, deer, pheasants. The only difference being that they cannot cry out. You must do what you must do to be living in this world. It is your task. A task? Yes, just a task. A completely mindless task. Feel it. There, in the grass. Prey is moving. Just like a vegetable in the wind. Give it an arrow, just like you would give a vegetable a blade. It is just your task. Uh... Right. That makes sense. It's just like cutting a stem. You are now a hunter. You have learned how to hunt. I am? I have? Oh, good! What a relief! You have understanding now, I can tell. Great! Leave it to me! I'll hunt down my prey just like their vegetables! I have belief in you. Aw, oh, thanks, Petra! I can do this! Make way for Huntmaster Bernie! Have luck, Bernie. You're not finding anything difficult, right? You seem to have settled right in. I am settled. Everyone shows great kindness. I'm glad to hear it. I was so surprised when you first arrived. A princess all the way from Bridget. You have my gratitude. But please do not call me princess. You are making my cheeks blush. There's nothing to blush about. You're every little girl's dream of what a princess should be. Anyhow, I suppose it's been a long time since you've been back to Bridget, hasn't it? I hope you aren't homesick. Maybe we can cook one of your favorite dishes from back home. I do wish for that, but there is no possibility. The ingredients are not found here. I suppose you're right. That's probably why they don't cook the food of Bridget in the dining hall. I'm sorry. I just got to thinking about how hard it must be to live somewhere so far away from home and... It can't be impossible. I'll fix you a real meal of Bridget. I'll just find a recipe and similar ingredients. Wait, Dorothea. It is the thinking that counts. But your cooking is... What is the word? Horrendous. That is what everyone is saying, anyway. Horrendous? Nobody's cooking can be that bad. The thinking is enough for me. You have my biggest gratitude. Fine, I'll do something instead of cooking for you. I just want to be sure that you feel at home here. How about a massage? That may help you loosen up. I have no problems. My body is already able to relax. Oh? Then perhaps I could sing you lullabies to help you sleep. I'm not having sleeping trouble. Just know that you never have to worry about putting me out. I like helping my friends. Well then, I must be going, but remember my offer. Dorothea is filling my heart full. Dorothea, I want to be asking you a question. Oh, please do. Why have you come to Garrig Mach? Is your gold different from the rest? Yes, I suppose. Everyone here is an heir or an heiress, but not me. I'm just a commoner. When I enrolled in the Officer's Academy, I was different than everyone else. I wanted to secure my future, and my big idea was to marry money. Ever since, I've been dating different, terribly well-to-do men, searching for a good one. So far, there's been no reason for a second date. Marrying money? That is not sounding like a good idea. Money would be a bad husband. 
Pretty much. But you treat me well. I have so much gratitude. Well, why do you show me such friendliness when I am not money? Oh, no, Petra. This isn't like that. I like spending time with friends. It's wonderful being friends with you. And I hope we can stay close for a long time to come. Yes, I have that hope too. But I have also been thinking of who is good for me. Oh, I see. And still I am thinking we should be friends. Oh, I know why. Because we're both trouble for Imperial nobility. Yes, we both have troubles. Feels nice, doesn't it? Knowing that together we can irritate that many people. Since we've already got a lot in common, let's get to know each other better, shall we? Oh, Petra, are you researching something? Yes, I am investigating useful fighting techniques. You're always trying to become a better fighter. Personally, I'm sick of all the battles. You are... feeling sick about battle? Oh, I understand. Yes, I am also wishing for this war to finish quickly. Sooner the better. Uh, I don't even remember the last time I washed my hair. Yes, it is hard to be braiding your hair when it is damaged from lack of care. Speaking of, you know I don't think I've seen many braids like yours, Petra. I assume it's a hairstyle from Bridget? May I take a closer look? You may. This style of braiding has been passing... Uh, has been passed down through my family. How very elaborate. That must take a long time to do. Your words are delighting me. Braiding it does take up a great amount of time every day. Every day? No, I suppose you couldn't sleep with your hair like that, could you? When there's time, do you think you could teach me? It would be fun to match you every now and then. And once I learn how, I can help you with your hair. What do you think? I am really liking that idea. It would give me great happiness to have our hair match. <laughs> I'd like it too. Dorothea, before I had confusion, I thought you were being overly familiar. But then I gained understanding. Now I am knowing that is how you show your kindness. And I have much gratitude for that. It is impossible to be imagining life without you. You are... precious to me. Petra, what a lovely thing to say. I might just cry. If you will be crying, you can have my... Uh, uh, my shoulder. For your crying. Oh, I was just playing around. But if I ever do need a good cry, I do hope you'll lend me your shoulder. My shoulder will always be available for you. Oh, yeah? So I don't even need to make a reservation or anything? A reservation? For my shoulder? Oh, I just meant... <laughs> you know what? It doesn't matter. What matters is that I enjoy spending time with you. It makes me stop worrying about marriage and status. If that is the truth, then will you be coming to Bridget with me? Huh? When this war is finished, I am wishing for you to be seen my homeland. You... you are? Oh my. I'd love to, Petra. As soon as the fighting is done, I'd like nothing more than to see Bridget with you. Oh, is that Petra? Looks like she's out shopping. Hey there, young lady. Are you looking to buy, or would you rather cry? Just so you know, there's no beating my prices. Cry. Beating. Are you wanting to battle me? As in a battle of wills? Trust me, kid. You don't want to waste your life trying to beat me at... Huh? Sword or bow? Which are you fighting with? You have skill with both, I am thinking. Petra! What are you doing? Why are you fighting? What, what did she say? I was asked to be coming here and do the shopping. 
But then this merchant gave me her challenge. Huh? This has to be a misunderstanding. Look, I'll help you. What were you trying to buy? We are needing... vulneraries. Many people make use of them and our stock is lowly. Oh, got it. Just leave this to me. Come on, isn't that price a little high? Surely you can afford to go a bit lower. Are you kidding? This is even lower than my usual bargain rate. Really? Because the shop over by the gates is selling the same item for a little more than half that. Guess I'll have to head back there after all. Hey, let's all take a deep breath. Here's the deal. I'll give you another 10% off. How's that? Make it 20% and you've got a deal. Hmm, you drive a hard bargain. Fine. 20%, but you better be grateful. The shopping was successful. You have my gratitude, Ash. Not a problem. I'm used to this sort of thing. <sighs> Bargaining for prices in Fogland is complicated. I am thankful for this bargain. Now the extra can be given back to our professor. I had learnings about the customs of Fogland. I have gratitude for that, too. Uh, I wouldn't call it a custom, exactly. It's just a trick we commoners use to save money. Efficiency with money is a wonderful culture. I promise you, it's really nothing special. Ash, I need to give you more gratitude for the commoner techniques you showed me. Commoner techniques? Oh, you mean when I haggled for you? Yes, it has made for many savings. I was telling the professor, we both are so happy. <laughs> really, it wasn't a big deal, but I'm glad the professor was pleased. Hmm. Uh, what is it? Do I have something on my face? For a lot of time, I was living in the Imperial capital. Then I came here, to the monastery. Both places contain many nobles, and many chances to be learning noble customs. That's true. When you're surrounded by new people, you naturally pick up all kinds of stuff. Though with nobles, there's a lot to learn. All the etiquette is overwhelming. Not to mention the dancing. Ah, I just keep stepping on my partner's feet. In Fodlin, the nobles are training for dancing since their youth. They have much skill. When I was a kid, I spent most of my time helping out at my parents' restaurant and playing with my brother and sister. Back then, I never dreamed I'd ever be studying at a proper academy with all these nobles. I have learned many customs of the nobles, but few of the commoners. I am hoping you will teach me. Techniques, secret skills, anything. All of the things. Secret skills? <laughs> I don't think I know anything that fancy. That is not the truth. The technique for money saving could be helpful even for nobles. It has use for all the world. I don't know about that. Really, I don't have any special secrets. Commoner wisdom is only to be shared with commoners then? I have understanding. Forbidden knowledge. Ash, how about we make a bargain? We can be trading information. In Bridget, Powerful curse techniques are passed down, and we can speak with the spirits. I can be teaching you these things. What? C curses? No, 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 no. I, I don't need any dangerous information like that. But if you really insist, I guess I could teach you a few things about what life is like on the streets. Would that be enough? You will be showing me the secret techniques? I cannot be waiting! Uh, that's... not what I meant. Over here, Petra. Ash, I do not have familiarity with this alley. That's alright. This is the place I was talking about. It's not much to look at, but the food's incredible. Here you are, friends. Enjoy your meal. Hmm, looks great. Let's dig in. Oh, 
okay? I will be giving this my try. Oh! It has a delicious flavor. Ash, what is this dish being called? Uh, I'm not sure it has a name. They just kind of throw together whatever they've got. But that means you never eat the same dish twice. Not knowing what you'll get is part of the fun. A dish of infinite varieties? You would not be finding such a wonder in a restaurant for nobles. A commoner technique indeed. I give you my gratitude, Ash. I have learned a great many things about the commoner techniques. No need to be so formal. I like showing you around. Not many people want to come to places like this. But I am feeling that our deal has been very... one-sided. Are you sure you are not needing anything in exchange? If you are not wanting any curses, I can offer other information in trade. Hey, come on, stop that. Stop that? What am I stopping? Talking about payment. You don't owe me anything. We're friends, aren't we? Friends don't pay each other for the time they spend together. You and I... are friends? Are you speaking truth? I hope so, at least. So why don't we just talk about whatever we'd like, okay? I have understanding. I will now be speaking whatever I wish. You are my friend. There are many things I am wishing for you to know. What is it, Petra? Something catch your eye? Yes. The architecture of this cathedral is very grand. Fodlin craftsmanship always makes me astounded. I have been hearing that all of its adornments have meaning, and are all honoring the goddess. I heard that too. I'm not sure of the details, though. That reminds me. I've been wondering. Do you worship the goddess in Bridget? The goddess does not reside in Bridget. There are, however, many spirits there. Earth spirits, water spirits, wind spirits. Spirits dwell in all things. The ocean, for an example. The spirit of the ocean is with two faces. Its kind face is bestowing bountiful blessings, but its terrifying face is bringing disaster. I guess it's natural for the ocean to have spiritual significance to you when you're surrounded by it. Since Bridget's made up of islands, your people must have a lot of experience with boats, too. Yes, I have great skill at sailing. However, to be swimming is what I really love. Swimming in the ocean? I've never had the chance. What's it like? The ocean can feel shallow or deep, bright or dark, and it is filled with many creatures. There are always new things for discovery. On sunny days, I like to be diving under the clear surface of the ocean and to be looking up at the sky from below. Those moments are my favorite. The sun shining through the blue water. It can be making even the water sparkle like gems. That sounds amazing. I can't even imagine it. You must really love it, though. Your description just now is very poetic. It makes my time swimming in rivers and lakes feel pretty small in comparison. I am having an idea. When this war is over, we should be going to Bridget. With each other. Oh, well, I'd definitely like to visit. It's not the right time for me to travel, though. My duties as a knight will have to come first. A knight? Very well. I will be establishing an order of knights for you and Bridget. Wait, what? A whole knightly order, just like that? I am going to become the queen of Bridget. Ash, you will become my guardian knight. Do not have fear. I will be making your dream come true. I don't know, Petra. This is really ambitious. We will be diving into the ocean with each other, and be gazing up at the sky from behind the waves. I give you this promise. I hope you are understanding. All right, all right. That smile of yours has gotten to me. I don't think I can refuse. Glasses. Where are they? Where are they? Please take my apologies, Ignatz. I did not have enough care. 
That's okay, Petra. Just... Have you seen my glasses? Glasses? Ah, uh, yes! Transparent lenses for viewing things. Yes, exactly. Yes. Hmm. Your face looks different without the glasses. Ah, well, I dropped them. That's why I'm looking for them. Are these them? Oh, thank the goddess. I thought I might be in trouble there. Are you okay, Petra? You're not hurt? I have no wounds. And you? I'm okay too. Thank you. That is goodness. How long have you needed the lenses anyway? Hmm? Oh, ages. I can't see without them. You've never used glasses, I gather. I guess you don't need them. In Bridget, glasses are not existing. I think all of our eyes must be good there. I kind of figured. <laughs> I'm a little jealous, to tell the truth. Inside the shadows, dangerous beasts are lurking. If you cannot see, you cannot live. So bad eyesight means death? Bridget sounds scary. You need to have sight for hunting, too. If not, you will starve until death. Oh, yeah. Lots of hunting in Bridget, right? I guess that requires good eyesight. I wonder why eyes would change and need lenses. Ignatz, I am having a request. Huh? For me? Yes. Only you can be helping me. Something only I can do? That's a lot of pressure. What's it about? I want to borrow your lens. Your glasses. I have curiosity. Oh, you want to try my glasses? All right. I have so much gratitude. I will be trying them now. So, Petra, what do you think? The world appears... blurred. Oh, my head feels dizzy. The danger for being sick is now... very high. What? Petra, take them off. If you lean on me that hard, I'm going to... Ah! How are you feeling? I am feeling much better now. You have my thanks. You're welcome? I guess you shouldn't wear glasses unless you need them. Yes. I do not have friendliness with glasses. Like heroes' relics. Only certain people can be using them. <laughs> Glasses are like heroes' relics. What a funny thing to say. It is not for a joke. I was saying the truth. Your glasses are only for you to use. But I give thanks for you showing them to me. Petra's always so serious. Relics, glasses... I never thought about it like that. Petra, you always seem so focused on your training. Ignatz, are you wanting something from me? I want to apologize about the glasses debacle. Apologize? I will give you my forgiveness, but I am not understanding. When I laughed at what you said, I felt really bad for doing that. I'm realizing that I can learn a lot from you. You are learning new things from me? What kind of learning? Nothing specific, but more like, you really take things seriously. You approach the world with genuine curiosity, and consider it carefully. You have a sincere, wholehearted approach to learning new things. I envy that. I am thinking you also have great seriousness. That is why you are worrying. But your worrying is not necessary. You think so? That's kind of reassuring. Also, you have much kindness. You are apologizing for the smallest of things. Your heart is overfilled with compassion. You have honesty, too. You are a good person. Me? Oh, I think that's going too far. You are also having the ability to wear lenses. You are like 
A hero chosen by the lenses. Because I wear glasses? That final one was joking. I do not always have to be serious. That was a joke. I didn't realize. I guess it was okay for me to laugh after all. You always look so humorless. It's hard to judge. Oh, I don't mean that in a bad way. You're a fun person to be around. I'll know that you're joking next time. Without you telling me. <laughs> it is greatly important for us to be understanding each other. I think so too. I've been hoping to learn more about you. Then we can be spending much more time with each other and learning much. It's you. You appeared out of nowhere. I have a question to be asking you. Sure, I don't mind. I'll answer your question. You are always surrounded by people. When you speak, they smile. I feel envy. I want to know the secret to having a happy conversation. Ah, uh, you need a lesson on breaking the ice. That's a slippery subject, but I bet we can crack it. <clears throat> now, let's see. Well, the crucial thing is to start conversations. Be proactive about saying hello. Ask questions. Also, it might help to stop sneaking up on people. Start conversations. Stop sneaking. I am understanding. Is there more? Well, you can always try throwing in a joke to lighten the mood. The trick is to keep trying so you get practice. Put your best foot forward. And try not to put it in your mouth. <laughs> what are you saying? Why are you laughing? Oh, I, uh, I just made a little joke. A joke? Can you give me more explanation? Uh, well, uh, put your best foot forward. That's an expression people say that means try as hard as you can. And putting your foot in your mouth doesn't really mean what it sounds like. Uh, when you put your foot in your mouth, you are saying something rude without meaning to. And so, ah, what am I going on about? There's nothing worse than trying to explain a joke. Petra, you've gone awfully quiet. I suppose you've lost faith in me as a conversation tutor. You are playing with your words. We do such things in Bridget, too. In Fodlin, you have a strange way of playing with a word's meaning. I am admiring of it. You admire me? Oh, Petra, no need to say kind things out of pity. You didn't hurt my feelings. Am I hurting them? If you were sincerely complimenting me, then no. <laughs> to think, you just started learning how to chit-chat, and you've already got a silver tongue. You really put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> More laughing. This must be a complex technique for word playing. I've shared a fair number of jokes with Petra by now. Though there is a strange shame in having to explain them all in detail. Hmm. Ah, is that Petra? She's talking to some kids. Our hunting had great success today. You're amazing, lady. Did you really catch all those birds? How do you even get that good at hunting? You wish to know the secrets? Yes, please. Teach us, teach us. Hey, Petra, what were you saying just now? I was asked to tell the secrets of my hunting. Oh. Wait, are you going to try using... Training is the most important for hunting. You can start by... Breaking the ice! Huh? Wait, I think you mean breaking the ice. <laughs> you sure broke something there. <laughs>
<laughs> what I meant was... That technique was an incredible one. You are the most comedic genius in all of Fodlin. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say genius, per se. I don't really get what they're saying, but it looks like the lady's having fun. Yeah, she's, uh, a pretty funny lady. I have been called a funny one. It is all because of your doing, Aloise. They seem more shocked than amused. I want even more improvement. I wish for you to instruct me all day. Will you be agreeing, Professor Aloise? Petra seems to be headed in a strange direction, but it is her choice. If she starts telling lots of bad jokes, I hope the people of Bridget don't come after me. Not my fault. Shamir, you are training away from the ground of training. Ah, Petra. Well, it looks like it might rain. I have understanding. Rain training can cause unhealthiness. Can I give you a question now? Sure. You come from Dagda, I think. Why are you working at the monastery? You can tell I'm from Dagda? Oh, I suppose Bridget is our neighbor. As for why I work here, that's simple. I work to live. I also have an interest in seeing what happens to your professor. I don't plan to return to Dagda anytime soon. But Fodlin is an enemy for you, right? Are you feeling okay about that? The only ones I've fought in person are the Imperial Army, under the command of the previous Emperor. I carry no ill will toward anyone else. Including, of course, the current Emperor. I have gratitude for your answering. You have given me understanding. How about you? Do you hate them? The Empire is your father's enemy, no? And it's Dagda's fault that Bridget got pulled into the war at all. So, do you hate Dagda? Or do you see that as none of your concern? The fault is not of Dagda. My father made his own choice to be joining the war. I cannot say I have no hatred for the Empire. But I do not have any for Edelgard. She gives me much help and strength. I cannot have hate for her. Makes sense. You can hate a country without hating its people. You speak with such honesty. It is very amazing. I'm not that special. I just don't let emotions get in my way. Shamir. Can I be having your time? There is a thought that is giving me great concern. Let's hear it, Petra. If Dagda is ever invading Fodlin again, what will you be doing? <laughs> I'd join the army of Dagda. I'd lay waste to Fodlin and return to my homeland. If that is the truth, then I am having one more question for you. If that was happening, would you be fighting your allies in the Imperial Army too? Of course. You expect me to die for you? You should be prepared to do the same. Your homeland would likely join Dagda. So, that is your truth? Maybe. If you'd asked me five years ago. Hmm? I've been a mercenary since childhood. Always fighting for a bounty. If my allies didn't pay, I'd side with the enemy. It's why I became a sniper. Easier to dispose of anyone with a reward on their head. It's also why I joined the Knights of Seros. I owed them a debt. But that's all changed. You are not fighting for money now? That's right. When I see everyone fighting for Fodlan, I feel inclined to help. I won't die for the cause, but I will protect everyone. If the army of Dagda engaged you, I'd fight at your side. Hearing that is giving... it gives me great joy. Until the war is finished, let us fight together. Cyril, 
You are always having great passion and hard work. You give inspiration. Aw, oh, just doing my job. There is no need for showing humility. You work with hardness. I mean, you work hard. It makes me have curiosity. Can you tell me what plans you hold for the future? The future? I don't know anything about the future, but I'm kind of busy, so can we talk later? I have had the learning that you are from Almira. Everyone has the saying that it may have... Uh, may be hard to move up in the church for you. But even with that, you always have passion and work with hardness. What fills you with determination? <sighs> I work because I work. It's what I do here. And, you know, I really want to make myself useful to Lady Rhea, so I can repay the big debt I owe her. Lady Rhea gave me a home when I didn't have one. I understand the feeling of need for repaying debts. But does it give you difficulty, being a great distance from your home for so much time? Almira's just where I was born. It's not like I've got family there. If you love your homeland and want to go back, then that's nice, but it's not a thing I want to do. I like where I am. The best future I can think of is if things stayed like this forever. Yes, I have understanding. You and I have similarities. But at the similar time, we have differences. Maybe. Hey, I still got a lot of work. Better get to it. Cyril does not want to speak about his land of home? It gives me curiosity. Petra, what are you doing? Hello, Cyril. I was doing training for hunting. I thought you were already a good hunter. I am good, but to keep good, I must keep practicing. Oh, I get it. Huh. Hey, can I ask you a question? I mean, I figure you asked me a personal question before, so now it's my turn. That is, if you don't mind. Tell me why it is you do all this training, and if it's got something to do with where you're from. My training and my land of home. Before I can give answers, I must give you my history. I was a child in Bridget. But then there happened the war with the Empire. My parents were... They died. Bridget lost in the war. After it, a decision was had that I must go to the Empire. War, huh? That's the same as me. Yes. But our difference is that I still have a strong devotion to my land of home. I want to grow my skills and train with hardness for the goodness of my land of home. I will one day be leading Bridget. I want to have better relations with Fodlin. So that is why I am here, when I wish I could be there. Oh wow, you do all this so maybe you can be a leader for your people? I guess I was right. You're real different than me. We have differences, but we do not have so many differences. You and I are the same, I believe. The same? You work with great passion, all for the future and to keep protected what is here today. I work for the future of my land of home. You are the same, but here is your home. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe, but I guess that does mean I'm putting in a lot of effort every day, just like you. That is what I have said. You and I are the same, even with the differences we have. Cyril, how is your bow training progressing? I think maybe I've gotten better. It feels a lot easier to ready the bow lately. That is a nice thing to be hearing. You have my support with your efforts. I do? Yes. I am always cheering you on. I am long feeling a great affinity with you. Our positions are dissimilar, but our situations have great similarities. That is why I am always trying hard to be supporting and protecting you. You mean, you've been cheering me on all along? That's nice to hear. Well, in that case, 
I'll support you too. You will? That gives me great joy. It makes you happy? It's gonna sound funny, but hearing you say that makes me feel happy too. You know, I just realized that there's... Well, when you talk, it's kind of powerful. It's like everything you say feels real nice and reassuring. Just listening to you makes me feel better about everything. I think it's a special talent you have. Words can be said by anyone. Alone, they are without power. What is meaningful is how you are feeling. I am hoping I can learn to use words well to convey my feelings. That is my wish. I am still learning. My words are not coming out as properly as I am wanting. Maybe the words aren't, but the feelings behind them are. I really do think you're special. Now that I know you're supporting me, I'm going to work real hard not to let you down. And, um, I hope someday I can get strong enough to inspire you the same way you inspire me. You have already been achieving that goal. You already have great strength. You really think so? Nah, I still got a long way to go. I'm not tough enough to match you yet, so I'm gonna get stronger. Stronger and stronger so I can support you forever. Stronger and stronger? So you can be supporting me forever? Yeah, forever and ever. Even when I am being an old woman? It will be a difficulty then. <laughs> sure, even when you're an old woman, I'll be an old man right beside you, doing my best. Old woman Petra and old man Cyril supporting each other. I am looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, that does sound nice.